Hi there! In this tutorial, we'll be talking about how to set up your drawing in order to get it ready to print. Now the most important part of any printed drawing is the line weight. We can adjust the line weights over here in the Layers panel. If you scroll over to the right, you'll see an option that says Print Width. Right now, all of our lines are set to a default, but we want to make sure that each line is given a specific width. If we bring this out here, we'll be able to see the names. Click on Default to change the print width. We're going to set building to 0 0.03 millimeters, property line to 0.5 millimeters, trees, curb, and annotation will be set to 0.18 millimeters, and striping will be set to 0.25 millimeters. While we're here, we can also change the color that the lines will print in. As we mentioned before, these boxes indicate the color that the lines show up in the Rhino model, and these diamonds over here indicate the color that the lines will be printed in. Now unless you want an accent color in your drawing, you can change all of these simply to black. We can leave striping as gray in order to give our drawing some depth. Lastly, we're going to set up the line type for each layer. We want each layer to be continuous except for the property line. For that, we're going to need to create a new line type. To do this, we need to access document properties. Under annotation, we're going to select line types. Here we have the default line types that come with Rhino, but for property line, we're going to add a new one, which is going to be down here. We want this line type to be a long dash followed by two shorter dashes. Now the way this works is you type in the length of each dash as well as the length of the gap between each dash. You might need to play around with this a little bit, but for this purpose, this is the sequence we're going to do. This means that the long dash will be half of an inch, each gap will be an eighth of an inch, and the shorter dashes will be a quarter of an inch. It's very important that you make sure that the scale of your line weight is set correctly. Now, it may be set to one as the default, so it's really important that you check this. Now, the way that you choose the scale is based upon the scale that you want to print at. In this example, we want to have our final drawing print at 1 8th inch of a scale, which means that 12 feet in the model space is going to print at 1 8th of an inch. There's a handy chart that you can reference to. I'll pull it up here. Now, if you look at an eighth of an inch scale, the scale factor that you need to use is 96. So, we'll type 96 in here, and it should ensure that this line prints the way that we want it to, at half an inch, eighth of an inch, quarter inch, etc. Now, the last thing we want to do is rename this line type. So I'm going to double click here, and we'll name it property line. That way we will be able to find it later when we go back to our model space. Now if you click here on the line type, the line that we created should show up here under property line. We'll hit OK and it should pop up. If we zoom in a little bit we'll be able to see that line that we created here. Now that everything has been drawn, we're ready to set up the printing layout. First, turn off your aerial photo, as we don't want that to print. Type layout in the command bar and pull up this dialog box. For printer, if you have the option, choose Adobe PDF. If you don't, any of the other printers here will do, and you should be able to print to a PDF later down the line. We want the size to be 11 by 17, landscape. The initial detail count indicates how many sheets you have in your layout. Because we only have one drawing, we'll keep this number at 1. Lastly, we want to name this file. In this case, 
we'll say site plan. After you hit OK, you may notice that site plan has been added to the tabs along the bottom. This helps you easily switch between your drawing space and your layout. Note that by double clicking inside this layout, it brings us back to our model space. We can pan and we can also zoom. But you have to be careful because the zoom can mess up the scale that we're going to set up. To set the scale of this drawing, click this black arrow here and select Scale Detail. Click on the detail you wish to scale and then hit Enter. Remember that we want to print at 1 8 inch scale. So first, we need to type in 1. This indicates 1 inch on the layout or your printed page. Then we need to indicate how much 1 inch on the layout equals in the model. Because we're printing at 1 8 inch scale, that would be 8. Now our drawing should be scaled. We can do a quick check of this by going back to our drawing space and drawing a rectangle that is 8 feet by 8 feet. If we go back to our layout and we use the command distance, this box should measure 1 inch by 1 inch. And you can see up here that that is true. So that means that we've scaled our drawing correctly. If you like, you can reorient your picture by double clicking inside and using the pan tool to center your building. The last thing we need to do is to delete that and simply print our picture, which we can do by typing print into the command bar. This brings up a dialog box where you can then complete your printing job. You may need to double check that the size of the page is the one that you've indicated previously. In this case, we want it to be landscape and we need it to be 11 by 17. Once you've printed your document to a PDF, you can open it and check to see that the line weights are looking the way that you want them to look. If something seems off or you want a line to be a different color, feel free to go back into Rhino and change things appropriately.